Welcome to Sunday Hope. I'm Ian Bentley, the Archdeacon of Lynn, and I'm speaking from our home in Sparham. The other person you'll hear from is my wife Caroline, who will read from the Bible and lead us in prayer. A moment's quiet now as we remember that we are in the presence of God. This Sunday is when we remember St Luke, disciple, evangelist, and of course the writer of the Gospel and of the Acts of the Apostles. After the prayer for St Luke's Day, Caroline will read from Luke's Gospel. Almighty God, you called Luke the physician whose praise is in the Gospel to be an evangelist and physician of the soul. By the grace of the Spirit and through the wholesome medicine of the Gospel. Give your Church the same love and power to heal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 9. The Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the labourer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick, who are there and say to them the kingdom of God has come near to you. Some 25 years ago when I was on my pre-ordination retreat newly moved to Mattishall in mid Norfolk where I was to serve as curate with Caroline and our two children both under five I remember going on a prayer walk in Ditchingham where the retreat was being held. On the prayer walk I passed fields ready for harvest and prayed these very verses and promised to be one who was ready to be a labourer in the harvest of God's kingdom, seeking people to win for Christ, seeking to be a disciple and to make disciples of others. I was somewhat surprised to be led back to the same place three years later when I became rector of Ditchingham with Ersham, Arborough, Denton, Broome and Headenham. In the seven and a half years we were there, we saw God honour the promise that the harvest is indeed plentiful. We saw people grow in faith and take positions of leadership where they shared the task of labouring in the fields of the kingdom. We saw a growing group of teenagers being discipled and much else. And when I read this passage, I'm always driven to think Am I going to believe what the world at large says about the church, about evangelism, that people aren't interested, that the church is dying? Or am I prepared to believe what Jesus says, that the harvest is plentiful and it's the labourers we need and that our prayer should be for God to raise up and send out labourers into what is his harvest? In these verses, Jesus gives a simple technique. Be focused on the task. That's what the sandals stuff is about. It's all too easy to take our eye off the ball of what we should be doing. The church as an organisation needs something of its structures and meetings. But if they don't serve our central gospel purpose, then perhaps we need to question what we are about. Be focused on the task of mission, says Jesus. And then meet people and say, peace be with you. 
Our first contact with people shouldn't be about invitation or asking for money and all the other things that consume us. It should be friendly and focused on the needs of the other person. We might not in our culture say peace be with you, which is essentially a greeting, the shalom of the times. But a how are you? What was your week like? That puts the other person in the central place. Then, if that peace is returned, if there is the spark of friendliness that opens up further conversation, then great, looking for that person of peace. And of course, always offer prayer if the person is responsive, for that is something that we can always offer. And after all, people can only say no. Of course, there is much more that we can offer and, and receive from people as we move naturally in the work of mission. And Jesus reminds us that it won't always be easy. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. But he promises to be with us and that the harvest is indeed plentiful. Some things to ponder as music plays. Who do you give thanks for that helped you early on in your journey of faith? Who might you pray for in their journey of faith right now? And is there one person of peace that God is prompting you to ring, to email, to write to, or visit if you are able? St Luke the Physician leads us to pray for our health service, for those caught up in this pandemic, for those who have lost loved ones to it, for our leaders as they seek the best way through this public health crisis, for all of us coping with a life that is different, for those whose mental health is suffering and for those who are lonely. Creator God, who knits each person together in their mother's womb. It is you who reveal knowledge to scientists and doctors. We thank you for the heritage of medical breakthrough, expertise and welfare we enjoy in our nation, freely available to us because of your revelation and the faithfulness of previous generations. Renew thanksgiving in our hearts for what we have received because of others' work and sacrifice. Healer of nations, you provide insight to all who seek you and defend those in need. We thank you for the gift of health services in our nation, freely available to everyone no matter their background, income, level or need. Give your wisdom to our government health professionals, 
and advises as they seek the right reforms. Bless our health service to thrive, to prosper and to heal. Bless our doctors and nurses to care, to excel and to bring healing. Bless our nation to understand, thank and honour those who seek to bring us health. Give breakthrough in this pandemic, a vaccine, improving treatment and a speedy end. Amen. St Luke the Evangelist reminds us to pray for the mission of the church. Lord of the harvest, continue to send labourers into the harvest. We pray for those recently licensed as readers, those ordained priest and deacon over this summer in our diocese. We pray for Bishop Graham as he leads us in a renewed vision. We pray that local congregations clergy and their ministry teams will be encouraged and will see the results of their labours as more people are brought into the kingdom of God. Amen. We join in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And a blessing to bring our time of worship to an end. God give you grace to follow his saints in faith and hope and love, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.